The purpose of this tutorial is to calculate the direction that power flows in birefringent crystals, because as we've said in class, it's not necessarily in the same direction that the wavefront normal points. We'll start off with the idea that there is an optic axis somewhere in a material. So we will draw a dashed line representing that optic axis OA. And then we'll assume that there is a plane wave propagating in that material, and that is what we'll choose to be the horizontal direction. We're free to choose that since we're setting up our coordinate system. And we give that the vector S hat. And the other thing that we assert is that the electric field is polarized in the plane of the blackboard, although not necessarily perpendicular to S hat, which would be up this way. So we will draw it at some other angle like this. And that's the electric field vector E. So electric field is oscillating up and down this way. And we want to find out what the direction of the pointing vector is going to be. The magnetic field B, it's proportional to a cross product between these two vectors, S hat and E. So the magnetic field must be into the board, into and out of the board with time. And then the pointing vector is parallel to the cross product of E and B. So it's got to be in the plane of the page since B is, is perpendicular to the plane of the page. And it's also perpendicular to E. So that gives us this direction perpendicular to E as the direction for the pointing vector. So to emphasize orthogonality, draw the little box there to say it's perpendicular to E. Now, how do we actually figure out the angle that the pointing vector makes? We can label some angles that we've already talked about. The angle between the optic axis and the wavefront normal, we've already got a name for that. That's this angle here going in the counterclockwise is positive direction from the optic axis towards S hat. We're going to call that angle gamma. Gamma can be a negative angle, but here I've made it be a positive one. And now we're going to also name the angle that the pointing vector is making with the optic axis. If we can figure out what that angle is, then we know the direction of the pointing vector. And we name that angle alpha. Now we set up a couple of other axes here that help us keep track of things. We can have this vector, a unit vector t hat, which is orthogonal to s hat. You'll see that in your problem sets. And we also write two unit vectors which point along the optic axis and normal to it. So we have one vector in this direction, which we call E hat, E for extraordinary, because an electric field oscillating this way will only see a susceptibility chi E. And orthogonal to that, in this direction, so these two are orthogonal, we have another vector which we will call O hat, and that electric field oscillating in this direction, it would only experience susceptibility chi O. This angle alpha between the blue axis E hat and the yellow direction pointing vector is the same as this angle right here. That's also angle alpha because the blue directions are orthogonal to each other and the yellow vectors are orthogonal to each other. So if this is angle alpha, 90 degrees away, this is also angle alpha. So now we can try to start relating all of these angles to each other. One thing that comes up in the problem set that you're going to prove is that we define an, a, a ratio rho to be the electric field dotted into the E hat unit vector ratio to the electric field dotted into the O hat unit vector. And you're going to prove that that's equal to the following ratio. It's the ratio of the, of the two constants of the birefringent material, N O and N E, squared, times the tangent of this angle alpha, the angle that the wavefront normal makes with the optic axis. So that's something that you're going to be proving but let's take a look at this geometry up here and we'll see something else. If I copy, I'm going to copy over now a few of the key vectors from this diagram so that you can concentrate on them. 
So I've copied over the electric field vector E from this diagram up above, and also the O hat and E hat vectors, and I've labeled the positive angle alpha. Alpha is between 0 and 90 degrees. What we're going to do is calculate what its tangent is. That's our strategy. So if I write out that I want to figure out the tangent of alpha, if I look geometrically, I draw a little rectangle here, and that creates this triangle. The opposite over the adjacent of this triangle would be equal to the tangent of alpha. The opposite of this triangle is the projection of E onto the E hat axis. And to be precise, it's negative E dot E unit vector. Notice that with alpha being a positive angle, if I want to write this as a positive length, since E pushes away from the E hat direction, this dot product is going to be a negative quantity. So to get the positive length here, I have to put negative E dot E hat. Then I want the adjacent length on this triangle, and that's positive E dot O hat. Because the electric field's component along O hat is already positive. So that's the tangent of alpha, but notice up above how rho is defined. Rho is defined as these two dot products ratio to each other. Here I've put a minus sign only in the numerator, not in the denominator, so that's equal to negative rho. So if I now combine these two results, I find, therefore, that the tangent of alpha is very quickly related to the tangent of gamma. And the relationship is just a proportionality by the square of the NO and NE values. So this is the formula that you want to use whenever you're trying to figure out the relative orientations of the way the wavefront normal is pointing and the way that the pointing vector is going. And just to remind you of what we're talking about physically here, we're talking about wave fronts that may be advancing through space conceptually like this. That's the diagonally a, a traveling line of people in a band stepping diagonally. The direction that the power flow is going is the direction of the pointing vector and the direction of the normal to the front of the band, the direction of the trombone slides, if you will. Didn't draw it too accurately there, but you see what I mean. That's the wavefront normal direction. So now you know how to strategize figuring out the direction of the pointing vector once you know the direction of the wavefront normal.